Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. In our last lesson, we talked about tables and how to manage them. But in today's lesson, we're going to talk about images. So let's create an image frame by clicking on this button or by using a shortcut. So by clicking the eye on your keyboard and then press and create your image frame like this. Then click on the right button and then get image like this. Scribus will open up a window where you can get your image, for example, this one. And as you can see in our image properties, we have everything related to our image that we just loaded. So for example, its position that we can change with these buttons, its rotation with this button also. And then right here on the scaling process, we have it scaled to the frame size, but you can also have free scaling with these X scale and Y scale linked so that if you change them, they're going to be proportional to one another, but you can also unlink them. So you'll have something that does not maintain the ratio between the X and Y measurements and the same with the DPI. Now, as you can see, there's a difference between the image frame and the image itself, because of course, if you want to change the image frame, you have to go to the properties of the frame right here. And with these buttons, you can change the position of the frame and its width and its height and its rotation. And you can also color it. For example, you can color the stroke. You can have it green like this. As you can see, you have it right here. And then you can also fill in this blank part right here. You can have it magenta, for example, like this. And if you want the frame and the image to match, you have to click on the right button and go to adjust frame to image and you'll have them adjusted. There's also another way to import images and it's opening a folder on your computer where you have the image and then drag it on your computer like this and you'll have it in its actual size and you can also change it up or you can create an image frame and then load the picture in it so drop it on the image frame and it will fill the image frame like this another thing that you can do is fill a polygon with your picture so create a polygon then click on the right button on your mouse and then convert to image frame like this. So we'll have a cross and that means that it's an image frame right now and then load your picture on it and you'll have this image field. Of course, if you want to move the image inside the image frame, double click on the image, it will become blue like this and then you can move it as you wish to better center it or to have it in other positions to leave blank spaces where you wish them to be. You can also load multiple pictures at a time. So go like this and then drag it and you'll have them right here all at once. And then of course you can select only one of them and then you can drag them. And of course you can also manage their position. So right click and then go to levels. So you can have it raised like this, I will come as a first, or you can have it lower to the bottom. So it will become the last one in this order in order to manage the visibility of each picture. Now, another important thing is the preview settings. So you can change them to having a full resolution, a low resolution or a normal resolution. You can have the image not visible or visible. So right now you have everything that you need to know about the image, but it's not visible. Or you can have it visible like this. And then you can also have it at full resolution, but this will cause the document to be loaded slowly. And also on the preview mode, if you're having, if you have a document with more pages and more images, it will become more slow to load. Another really important aspect is the linking between the images and the document. So we loaded this image from our computer, but we have to 
embed this image with the file from our computer. So let's let's select it and then go on item and then go on image and embed right here. And then let's click on the document that we imported this picture from. And then let's click on OK. This file already exists because we want to connect this image with already existing image. So let's click on OK. OK, so right now this picture is embedded. But look at what happens if we change the position of the file on our computer from one folder to another. For example, let's move this picture from this folder to our desktop right here, like this. Then let's go back to Scribus and then click on our right button of our mouse and let's click on update image. And you'll see that Scribus does not find the file in our computer because we changed its position, its location. So let's double click on the image frame. And this is the path that Scribus uses in order to retrieve the picture. But of course, it does not find it because we changed its location. So let's go on search and then let's change and let's select the new place where we put the file. And then let's go and start the search like this. Scribus found our picture. So let's go on select and then close. And you'll see that a picture is once again here. But remember that if you delete this picture from your computer, once you update the image, you cannot retrieve it. So if you delete it, do not update the image and you will stick with this proxy image that you have right here. So let's revise what we learned today. We learned about image frames and how to fill them with an image from your computer. We also learned how to create an image frame from a polygon. We learned how to insert multiple images and how to move them inside an image frame, for example, like this. And then we learn how to use image properties to scale them and to frame them. We learn how to adjust the image and the frame to the image. We learned how to color the borders of the image frame and fill it with color. And then we also learned how to embed an image and what to do if we change the location of the file connected to the picture or if we accidentally delete it. That's all for today, you guys. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to stay updated on our new videos in this video course about Scribus.